Hi everybody, I'm Craig Hemingway, Communications Manager for the City of Moose Jaw. Unfortunately, as you know, we had to cancel our water main open house information sessions due to COVID-19 restrictions, but the presentation we would have given at those sessions is what you are about to view right now. A background of the project, what it entails, and uh, a number of your questions will be answered throughout this process, and probably you'll have some at the end, but we'll tell you how to get a hold of us for those when we reach the end. Right now, I'll introduce to you to take us through the PowerPoint presentation Presentation, the City of Moose Jaw Manager of Engineering, Bevan Harleton. Uh, thanks, Craig. Like uh, Craig mentioned, my name is Bevan Harleton. I'm the Manager of Engineering with the City of Moose Jaw, and my work revolves around the delivery of capital projects for the city. So, an overview of the presentation today um, I'll be talking about um, the cast iron water main program and in conjunction with that the private work that homeowners and business owners can undertake uh, to remove lead uh, water services and no corrode sanitary services I'll touch on the project scope and how that work is coordinated between um, the private side work that uh, residents can undertake and the contract that the city will have with the water main replacement contractor and then I'll touch on some of the um, different options for homeowners and potential costs. So the program revolves pr primarily around replacing um, the very old cast iron that we have here in the city. Um, in conjunction with that, we are removing lead from the service connections, uh, replacement of no corrode sanitary service connections, and then associated with this work is um, road renewal and road refinishing and uh, sidewalk replacement in the places that we're cutting it out to remove services and to install mains. And we also, as we go through intersections and we come across catch basins that need repair or catch basin leads that could be upgraded, that work is coordinated and then done as a part of this project. So um, some of the issues with the existing cast iron system, um, most notably it's well beyond its service life. Some of it has served for uh, over a hundred years and um, is due for replacement. Um, we are experiencing high break rates and service disruptions. It's important to note that all those reactive repairs cost a lot of money and, it, in, and uh, your per meter cost um, for a a reactive or emergency repair is exponentially higher than planned capital works. So it's, a, it's an expensive uh, issue when our water mains do break in the city here. Um, there's impacts to traffic, both on the roads where we're doing the work um, and adjacent roadways. Um, there's impacts to health and safety and uh, it, it has the potential affecting the water in terms of, in terms of reduced flow rates, uh, turbidity and discoloration. Lead. Um, lead constitutes a number of uh, environmental risks um, in, uh, found in the environment, in our living spaces, and in the water, and in the water supply systems. Um, listed here are another health, a number of health impacts um, that are at risk with excessive um, levels of lead. Uh, and then at the bottom are some different um, areas where a person can find further information if they choose to do so. The city has no lead in its water distribution system, but where lead can remain is in our services from the water main out to your business or your home. So we are looking at uh, two different um, I'm not sure if there are options, but there are two different things will happen if you do have a lead service. One will be a partial replacement, and that will be the city undertaking to remove that lead water service from the water main out to the property line, and we will also replace the curb stop. That has issues in that when you cut through that lead, you're exposing fresh lead, and you will actually find potential of a spike in uh, lead lead levels in your, in your water at that time. Um, 
Alternatively, a homeowner or a business, business owner can engage with a contractor and we can complete a full replacement. Um, issues there are coordinating access um, to get inside the homeowner's house and coordinating the work to, to get the city's water main replaced at the same time that you as a homeowner choose to get your work done. Um, beyond that, what has been found is people still have lead inside their homes. So the work that you can undertake with our contractor will, will remove any lead up to your water meter. Beyond that, there has been instances where people have lead inside their homes and we would encourage you to have that looked at and removed as you see fit. No corrode. So no corrode is one of the uh, types of sanitary service pipe that is found in the city. It was commonly used after the, um, I believe it was commonly used after the second war and the idea was, as the name says, that it didn't corrode. Um, so basically what it is is cardboard coated in tar and uh, they found that this was a material type that was allowing for the passage of solids and liquids without uh, buildup. Unfortunately, as time passed, as you can see in this picture here, it was found that the tar splits, the material gets weak, and the uh, no corrode pipe can crumble or it can uh, buckle, like in this picture. So on to the scope of phase five. So phase five means we are in the fifth year of the cast iron water main replacement program. Uh, this year, as it stands, we're undertaking 2,360 meters of cast iron water main replacement, uh, which will include passing 163 water services at an estimated capital cost of five to six million dollars. So the city strongly encourages homeowners to optimize this initiative and address individual impacts and preferences while achieving the pro project goals. So that's a long-winded way of saying, while this work is getting done um, through the potential to coordinate with a contractor that you have uh, right there in front of you in conjunction with the water main work, uh, the potential for your no corrode subsidy, and the fact that the city, the city is covering the costs from the main out to your property line, which includes road, curb, sidewalk, and whatever landscaping is in there. Um, the point of this slide is to let you know um, that now is the time to undertake to remove your uh, private private services and replace your private services uh, as you see fit. In the scope of the the city's contract that we that we will engage with the contractor and so in the scope that's specific to that it's the water main the lead service up to the property line the road the sidewalk um, and for this last point yeah i should note um, another another water service that we are replacing is undersized copper lines so a lot of homeowners have the right material water service and that is copper but it's undersized it's five eighths of an inch instead of three quarters so for those services, we are replacing that five eighths from the main to your curb stop at your property line. And if you wish, you can have your side of that replaced too and have three quarter installed. Otherwise, there's no issue with installing, uh, connecting the three quarter, the new three quarter up to the previous five eighths. So the private work that is done in conjunction with the water main contract, not a part of, but in conjunction with, um, is the private services. Um, specifically, again, is the lead water services, the undersized copper water services, and the no corrode um, sanitary service. I do want to mention with that no corrode, the, um, the subsidy for this year's contract is the homeowner is to pay 68% of the cost that you will get from the contractor with the city subsidizing the remaining 32%. And I think I will be talking a bit more about that down the road here. Uh, there's some obvious benefits, including your health and safety and increased reliability and security of your service.
So just some points around the engagement process. Um, I do want to add to this that uh, prior to um, any work being done in your street, the first thing our contractor does is install a temporary water uh, system which is connected to the city's hydrants and runs on the surface and provides potable water to all the homeowners. So step one is taking the time to provide a, a potable water to everyone, making sure that it's tested. And once those tests comes back, come back and we, we've confirmed that the water is safe for consumption, at that point, our contractor can install traffic accommodations and start the work. Prior to that happening, uh, the contractor will be engaging the homeowner to discuss potential options that they have to, to get their private work done. Um, the two options are open trench and directional boring. Open trench is a more cost cost efficient way of getting this work done. But as you can see in the pictures, it's also, also much more invasive. There are a number of times, whether it's your front porch, uh, some landscaping, an old tree you like, there are, there, there are a number of situations where homeowners choose to go with the pipe burst or the directional bore. So the homeowner, after the contractor sends you a letter to let you know that they are coming to do the work, they will be providing a contact number for you. You give the, you give the contractor a call, they'll come to your house, they'll have a look at um, the specifics of your service and they'll provide you with a quote at that time. Um, I, I want to note that the way this work is being done with the water main being replaced down your block it's important that you um, respond to your contractor, engage with them, get your quote and get your work done while, it's, while the contractor can do it. Once they have put the pipe in the ground past your house or your business and covered it up, they'll be moving on. And, and there is no, there's no expectation for the contractor to come back and do work after they've come through your area. So it's important that you do contact the, the outfit when you hear from them. Again, this touches on communications, um, which is an important piece for a lot of people. Uh, this is just to let you to let you know that the that you will be notified uh, by the contractor before the work starts. You will be provided um, you will be provided a contact number. Um, in addition, the city's uh, project manager will be will be available for you if you do have any questions down the road. Um, and then finally, we will be providing construction updates um, on our city website and city, city social media sites. So a few points about uh, potential costs and uh, how the process will work in terms of uh, your private work. Um, so what happens in this process is the homeowner in, engages the contractor and enters into an agreement with that contractor for the work. That work's done outside of the scope of our contract with them. But where the city does come into play here is that we offer financing options. So after your homeowner and yourself sign an agreement based on the quote that you're given, your payment is then given to the city. What we do on the city side is track the uh, track the replacements that are done on your block. We make payment to the contractor based off of those agreements. And then we offer some financing options to you, the homeowner, whether you're paying lump sum right up front, or if you're, you're choosing to put it in on your taxes, which is that uh, it can be added to your taxes at 4% over seven years. Um, some approximate costs based on some previous work. Um, open cut service work is generally in the range of $9,500. And then on the trenchless side, as mentioned, is a bit more around $12,500. And here are the locations we wanted you to be able to have a look at uh, for 2020 for phase five. So we've got Staticona. Uh, east from 6th to 10th. We've got Fairford East from Main to 2nd Ave. We've got High Street from Main to 3rd. And we've got 3rd Avenue from Oxford to McDonald. Um, 
when our when our schedule is submitted from our contractor there are a number of requirements around um, schools and businesses and traffic flows that are included in our contract to seek to minimize disruption to the uh, to the people of the city of Moose Jaw. So that is a part of uh, something we consider in all of these contracts and we will do our best to manage that. I also do wanna share that upon completion of High Street, we will have replaced all cast iron between Main Street out, out to 10th Ave uh, West. So I'm, I'm excited about that. So thank you so much for that, Bevan. Uh, Craig Hemingway here again. And a reminder that if you do have any questions, uh, we do have a dedicated water main replacement page on the city's website, moosejaw.ca, uh, where we've had information on this year's program there. We'll have, of course, uh, this video on that site. That's probably where you're looking at it right now, in fact. Uh, and further to that, we know you will have more questions. And by all means, uh, you can certainly contact our engineering department. Uh, contact engineering at moosejaw.ca is the email address uh, for any questions you have leading up to uh, the point where construction begins. And as Bevan mentioned, through the PowerPoint, we'll continue to update the community and yourselves as construction continues and where access is for customers uh, and yourselves, all those sorts of things we will continue to provide through our website and social media channels. So with that, we thank you for joining us. And any questions, just let us know.